Danielle, I gotta tell you, I heard something completely to the opposite. Yes. Well, that's because I have better sources than you do. Well, I'd never reveal a source. Okay, okay, okay. Just this once, though. You know who Agnes Whitlock is here at the hospital? Well, she's the one that told... Oh, um, <clears throat> I'll call you back, okay? What else have we got? Okay, bye. That's it? That's it? You're kidding. No, and I took out radio ads and sent out flyers. Still couldn't get anybody to operate. <laughs> <laughs> I'd volunteer for surgery, but uh, I'm in perfect health. No, thank you very much, anyway. Uh, any, any messages for me? Mm-hmm. A woman called. A woman called. Well, that narrows it down to about 52% of the population. Any names? Mm -hmm. Abby Brisby. Cute name, huh? You know who she is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. She's my landlady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, anyway. Well, now that I know you're free for the rest of yeah, the afternoon... You can buy me a coffee in the cafeteria. I'll never talk to you again. Can you get a better idea? Yes, I do, actually. Almost at my place. Oh, am I invited also? To be blunt, Amy, no. Now you can check us out. Sure thing, doctor. Hello? Okay. That was Frank down at the highway department. First plows are going through now. They're opening up the roads, at least locally. What about the Land Rovers? As soon as they get the chains on, we can take them up. Uh, with a little luck, we should have those bodies out by sundown. Well, let's hope this weather holds. Oh, it, it will. Uh, forecast says we've got at least two days of good weather in front of us. I talked to some campers down the road. They want to know when we're opening up again. Oh. Well, no time soon. That's for darn sure. That whole west face still has to go. I don't want to risk losing any more people. What's the next step after we ID the bodies? Notify the next who can, I guess. I'm not looking forward to that. What do you say to them? I guess the easiest way is just to come right out with it. Uh, tell them we have the body and they have to claim it. Some are in pretty bad shape. Yeah, busted bones, faces are all different. Yeah, it's not going to be easy on anyone. You got those wallets and IDs, Dave? Yeah, right here. Oh. All right, let's make a list. Ten, isn't I it? know that. Now, look here, you try it. That's the third report of arson in the Glen Hill area within the last four months. Police refuse to comment on whether this is the act of a single individual or whether the incidents are unrelated. Meanwhile, more news on the Indian Head Avalanche, which has already claimed seven lives, with forest rangers predicting more to be found in the coming days. On an up note, though, it's been reported that a young hiker was found early today in a cave where he had sought shelter narrowly escaping death himself when the avalanche began. It, it's Lou. Wait, wait, there's it, it, more. We still do not know the name of the hiker. Reportedly, it was by luck that the searchers stumbled on a young to hiker. Be. survivors when suddenly the snow gave way under his boot revealing the young man unconscious in the cave at last report he's been taken down the mountain to a ranger station where he's being treated for mild lacerations while obviously cold hungry and extremely tired he should recover according to medics on the scene in a local story 70 year old it's gonna be him. Oh, wait a minute wait a minute let's calm down oh, we don't know that for sure it is robert it has to be he's always been lucky i've heard you say it a hundred times it would be typical now we've got to get up oh uh, wait a minute oh, listen the roads darling they're closed listen huh yeah well well then then the, but the weather is better now maybe they've reopened well, yeah. who do i call uh, uh, no, you, uh, uh, <clears throat> i'll do that the rangers will probably not i knew yeah. something like this well, going uh, to Holly, happen? Look, 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 look sweetheart look now calm down okay. look They've given no names. It could be anybody out there. Well, the rangers will... Yeah, that will I'll be the first thing I ask them. You right? I see. What, what, a recording? Oh, yeah, the same old sports. Uh, roads closed to all sorts of private vehicles. 
Well, who are you calling? There's another number they left. Now the number's busy. Mm -hmm. What do we do now? Well, we wait until it's unbusy. No, no way. I'm not going to wait uh, any Holly, time. listen, wait, watch my time. lips. The roads, they are closed. Oh. Capiche? Okay. We'll right? hire one of those four-wheel drives and, and uh, we'll get What is the point of hiring a four-wheel drive? They're not letting any private vehicles in up there. What? That... A minute, you've given me an idea. There might be but a What? The other night, uh, on the um, news, now they were talking about um, the rescue teams and stuff, right? Right, right. There were and four of them. Keep going. And, and they, they were, were aided by, by oh, helicopters. Yes. I want to inquire about uh, chartering of a helicopter. That's right. Uh, no, I don't have any names. That's why I'm calling you. you, you ring the airport. It's a good idea. Why didn't I think of you that? really think this is going to work? Uh, if I can find a charter company, definitely. Okay, well, I'm going to call Dan. Uh, wait, I can't wait. come in for work today, and then I'm going to Of course go you can go into work. There's no, there's no reason can why I you can't go into work. possibly work? Listen, this excited. is going to take me ages to set this up. I will let you know the second I know something, all right? Well, you, you you're can't... hurry? But think about your motivation, darling. Well, which is? Your paycheck. Now, get out of here, all right? Go, 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 go. Grab the coat, go. I will call you at work. Well, well you, you promise you'll... I promise I will call you the second I know anything. Yeah, I want to uh, inquire about um, chartering a helicopter. Uh, no, I, I have enough magazines that I don't need already. I don't need another subscription. I'm sure your magazine is different. Listen, I haven't got any money. Goodbye. Where have you been? At lunch. That's the story of your life, Heather. Scotty, since when am I not allowed to go to lunch? Since you've got a whole lot of paperwork to do out on your desk. The phone here has been ringing off the hook. All right, sir. I'll uh, go answer the phone and then take care of the paperwork. Meanwhile, Mr. Hand is here to see you. I can see that, Heather. The next time you announce a visitor before he comes into my office. Scotty, I didn't consider Mr. Hand a visitor. I thought he was your business partner. Which is what I'm here about, Baldwin. Our partnership. Okay, that's enough, Anna. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Well, get out. Close the door behind you. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Go easy on the girl. She may not be the world's greatest secretary, but she's still a real flower. Oh, yeah. She's a regular belladonna. What's that? It's a plant. It's usually poisonous. Oh, yeah. I get it. Well, I'm glad you did. Now, are we going to have a standing meeting? Or are we going to sit down? You're always so hospitable, aren't you, Baldwin? That's right, right up until the last minute. <clears throat> until we start talking business. What's on your mind, Anthony? Well, I'm trying to figure out why I'm always the last one to hear. Like Blondie out there said. I thought we were partners. Business associates. I like the sound of that much better. Whatever turns you on. All right, well, what is it that you think I'm keeping from you? I heard you got the money to go ahead with the mall. Where'd you hear that? Around. Well, you heard wrong, because there are a few steps to be taken before we get that far. Well, that's funny, because that's not the way I heard it at all. Well, you better check back with your source then, Anthony. It's the truth. What about the 500 grand? You're going to tell me you didn't get it from that lush moor and her million-dollar thumbsucker? Where'd you hear that? Like you said, I got sources. So is it a go, Baldwin, or isn't it? Because if I got to tell Mr. Largo it isn't, well, he's going to be just as mad at you as he already is at me. All right, listen, I'll tell you this, but it uh, doesn't go any further than his office, okay? That's fine with me. It's a go. When? Soon, a couple of days, since the check clears at the bank and everything. So why'd you lie to me? What are you acting so jumpy for? I'm not jumpy. Yeah, well, you look like it to me. Must just be all the excitement, you know? Well, now, you're not still lying to me, are you, Baldwin? I mean, the deal did go through. Of course it did. Why would I lie to you, Anthony? You tell me, hotshot. That's not a fair question. All right, I'll rephrase it. Who's your favorite doctor at the hospital? Well, you, of course. No, I mean to work with. Still you. This morning in surgery, when Michelle dropped the probe, most doctors would have snapped at her. You didn't say a thing. Well, oh, she knew she made a mistake. I mean, yelling at her would have only made it worse. Yeah, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Your attitude makes for a great operating room. 
Okay, now it's my turn. Who's your favorite nurse? <laughs> uh, well, let me think now. Oh, I know. I know. Amy. Amy? Yeah, see, I like the way she messes up my phone messages and <laughs> spills nail polish on the files. Keeps things interesting. You gotta be kidding. Yes, I am. You are my favorite. Now. Do you remember the night here when you served me Cornish hens? Yeah, I couldn't forget that one. Well, lately I've been thinking a lot about that night. Everything could have so easily gone the other way. I could have left here with nothing more than a good night kiss. Oh, I think we both knew what was going to happen. I guess so. Did you regret anything? It was beautiful. And so were all the other nights after. I thought so, too. I'm glad you remember that. I was afraid maybe you'd uh, forgotten. I couldn't forget that. You want some more? Coffee, that is. I think I better go. Well, wait a minute. You got the afternoon off. I don't want to infringe on your space. My space? My space. I heard a space for you right here. Mm, it's not a bad fit. Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Just kiss and run? I feel uncomfortable. Well, why? I don't know. You want to stay? I'll repeat the question. I heard. I want you to stay. I know you do. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's just that... What? You haven't shown me your etchings yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that seems like ages ago. Was it so long? Let's see if we can find that again. Remember this one? Sure, but do you have any idea when one will be available? Look, I understand the situation perfectly, but this is an emergency. I need a helicopter, and I need it quick. Look, hang the expense. All right. All right, I've got another. Let's do it this way. The second one becomes available, you call me. The name is Robert Scorpio, phone number 555-STAR. Got it? Yeah, that nightclub. Thank you. Busy signal. I'm having trouble getting through to the uh, ranger station. Yeah, we've been having trouble, too. Anything new on the wire? Nothing that we don't already know. Anything else I can do? Nothing any of us can do at the moment. I heard about the man in the cave. Do you think it's Luke? Well, we're trying to find that out. Uh, we're going to rent a copter and fly up there. We? Yeah, Holly and I. I'm sorry I got mad before. So am I. Robert, I realize that Holly is really having a tough time and that she needs someone. You have to realize, so do I. And I, I can't fight anymore. Neither can I, sweetheart. So please, can we just talk it out? Yeah, we will. When? Well, as soon as, uh, as, soon as we find Luke. Uh, and if you'll excuse me for just a second. Robert, I, I, please, let's just the... talk. Yeah, look, look. You really should be getting back to the office, really. I just don't believe. Uh, look, look, we'll talk. I promise we really will. And what was I trying to do here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one
Forget it. Okay. Just forget it. Your turn. How many more? Just two. I thought it'd get easier. But it only gets worse. This last one's gonna be the toughest. He was so badly crushed up, there's hardly anything left to see. Personally, I don't even see the point of getting the family up there for the ID. Somebody has to pick up the remains. Yeah. What about the Land Rovers, Chief? I'm expecting them any minute. Some funeral procession that'll be. I just wish there was something we could have done to prevent this. Can't stop Mother Nature. It was a restricted area. We posted the signs. They had to know. Better call that next name. What is it? Doug King. And the last one? Let me see. Yeah, here it is. Lucas Lorenzo Spencer. of careful planning. You know, I gotta hand it to you, Baldwin. I mean, first you marry a woman you don't give a damn about, then you move into her house, you get her to sign over her power of attorney, and finally you steal her kid's money. I, I didn't steal the money. It's a good investment, Anthony. Yeah, right. What's she think about all of this? Susan does uh, what I tell her to do. All right. I'm satisfied. Good. We just pass that information on to Largo, all right? Oh, I will. And he'll be real happy, just like I am. Good. Terrific. I'll, uh, I'll keep you informed when we move on to the next phase, all right? Why don't you forget that, pal? You just call me when the money starts to roll in. Yeah, you'll be the first to know. I gotta tell you again, you must have done some real fast talking to get Susan to go along with all of this. Well, you know me. Yeah. I do know you, Baldwin. You're a first-rate con man. And you just better hope you're not conning me now. Because I'd hate to think what Largo's gonna do to that cute little face of yours. You just relax, Anthony. Everything's gonna be all right. I'll see you around, Scotty. Heather, get in here right now. Yes, sir? All right, you've really done it this time. Done what? How did you find out about me investing Jason's money in the mall deal? Did you get the combination to my safe? Now, come on, Scotty. Don't you remember? You only gave me the keys to the file cabinet. Oh, get out of here with the file cabinet. There is nothing in that file cabinet about the mall deal. Now, you found out some other way. I want to know. How? The source. What source? I want a name, Heather. It's confidential, Scotty. Don't give me that. Now, listen, I'm going to make big trouble for you. You understand that? Oh, don't threaten me, Scotty. It's so unattractive on you. It makes you look desperate. I am desperate. You almost blew this whole mall deal. Now, how did you find out about the money? I had a friendly chat with your banker. Don't give me that. Carlson would never tell you anything. He knows that this is a confidential matter. Well, apparently, Mr. Carlson has a problem keeping his mouth shut because he told me the whole sordid story. All right. All right, maybe he did. What'd you go and tell Hand about this for? Well, I assumed Hand knew about it. He is your business partner. Well, he didn't, Heather. Yes, yeah, so I gathered, Scotty. You know, it might help if you kept your partners informed of this kind of information. Heather, he is my partner, all right? I will inform him on this information, not you. Do you understand that? Sure, I understand. Good. You're closing the door in my face again. You're closing the door in your own face. Yeah, the next thing you'll be telling me is you're cutting me out on the financial end as well. That's right. Just as soon as I change the lock on those file cabinets, you're obviously not on my side, Heather, so I'm not going to trust you. You may regret that. Time will tell. It certainly will. It's nice to lie in here in the middle of the afternoon. I feel wicked. Well, good, because uh, I do, too. You see, when I get happy, I get very wicked. <laughs> Noah? Hmm? I know you don't want to feel pressured. 
But I think I should tell you, I'm going to have a real tough time staying away from you. Well, why fight it? It's all right. I came to the not-so-surprising conclusion that this force, or whatever it is that's pulling us together, is a little too strong to fight. Does that mean we can spend more time together? How about all our time? Do you mean that? We need space. It's lonely, it's irrelevant. Why? Because I have what I want right here in my arms. You've got one for us? That's great. Don't worry about that. So long as it flies. Yeah, that's all I care about. Now, how soon? Perfect. Give us an outer pack and uh, we'll be there. Miss Vining. Amy, this is Robert. Hi, Robert. Any news on Luke? Well, I'm working on it. Uh, Holly around? I could page her for you. I'd really appreciate it. Maybe you'd rather just give me the message. <laughs> no, I really think I should talk to her. Hold, hold on half a second. Holly, it's for you. It's Robert. Hi. Ah, we're in business. I have a whirly bird standing by at the municipal airport. All I have to do is fuel her up and we're out of here. OK, well, I'll be right away. Now, listen, you check with Dan first. I don't want you getting into any trouble. Oh, he'll understand. Look for me in about 15 or 20 minutes. I'll pack. We're going to find him, aren't we, Robert? It's in the bag, darling, as my friend would say. OK, well, I'm on my way. Yes, Scorpio here. Uh, yes, I'm looking for uh, Ruby Anderson or Bobby Spencer. Well, who's calling? Uh, this is Ranger Dave Nelson of the Indian Head Wilderness Area. It's regarding Lucas Lorenzo Spencer. I understand that Ruby Anderson is his aunt. Well, yeah, that's right, but she's not here right now. If you can give me a message, I'll forward it to her. Uh, you are? Robert Scorpio, Luke's best friend and business partner. All right, Mr. Scorpio. Uh, I'm afraid it's bad news. We covered Mr. Spencer's body from the avalanche area. It was very badly crushed, but we were able to positively identify the remains from personal effects left on the body. Luke. Excuse Luke's, me, sir. Luke's dead. You're trying to... You're... You're, you're telling me that Luke's dead. Yes, sir. I'm afraid that's exactly it. Hello. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Do you understand, Mr. Scorpio? I said that yeah. Lucas Spencer is... Yeah. General Hospital will continue in a moment. <laughs>